everyone, it's Hannah and welcome back to day 18 of Vlogmas. Some of you won't be watching Vlogmas because you would have just stumbled across this. Hi, welcome to the channel, it's nice to have you here. Um, today is a bit of a different Vlogmas, I've decided to film a tutorial for you all because some of you asked for it. Quick heads up before I get into it, this is for personal use only, this is not for commercial use as in anything you make using this tutorial you can use as gifts for your own personal use or whatever but you cannot sell these please thank you very much that is because i bead and sell them myself i feel like it would be foolish of me to not ask that i don't know it might seem a bit arsy and i apologize if it does um but yes today i am going to be showing you how to make these really cute tiny beaded stitch markers if it gets in focus there we go uh, a little gingerbread house perfect for christmas oh come on I want to focus on my yarn instead. Who can blame it? I designed these to be used as stitch markers or progress keepers, but they are also easily used as earrings or as necklaces, or you can put a pin on it and make it a bro little brooch or whatever. Um, yeah, for those of you who are missing everyone's favorite part of Vlogmas, don't not fear, it comes after the tutorial today for those who aren't usually watching it, you know. Anyway, I will quickly say before we get started, uh, something that I forgot to mention is that um, the beading thread that I used, I used I think about 60 centimeters or so. Uh, you don't need a whole lot. You don't want too much, otherwise it gets in knots and it's the right pain in the ass. But about 60 centimeters or so should suffice. Um, and yeah, <laughs> let's just get into the tutorial, shall we? Oh, it's been a while since I've said that. So to make your gingerbread house, what you'll need is some Nymo beading thread, or at least that's the beading thread that I am using. I'm using a size 10 beading needle today, um, a bead stopper, not essential but very helpful, a pair of scissors, always grand, the findings that you're going to use if you're going to make them into earrings or a stitch marker or whatever, and then these are the beads that I use, these tiny, tiny little things here. So these are size 11 Mayuki Delica beads, um, this colour is DB... 2110, which is a Duracoat bead in opaque toast. I just think it's quite a nice gingerbread colour. Then we have this one up here, which is DB0214 in opaque red lustre. And then we have DB2127, which is the green in opaque spruce cylinder. Oh no, opaque spruce, sorry. And then DB200 in opaque white. And then, to make the loop at the top, I just have some Czech glass seed beads in also size 11. These aren't delicate beads, these are more rounded at the edge, whereas these are more cylindrical. Uh, but I just use them for the top, and then scissors, obviously. And yeah, that's what you need. It's voiceover time, starting at the bottom. We're picking up a ginger bead, a red bead, a ginger bead, a white bead, a ginger bead, another white bead another ginger bead, a red bead, and another ginger bead. And that is the first two rows of that design because this is just how peyote works. It's a, it's an odd system, but it's one that works. Now I am sliding that down to the end of my thread. I've got a bead stopper on there. And then I am picking up a ginger bead because we're about to start the next row up. We're skipping that first bead completely and we're sewing away from ourselves. Uh, through the red bead bloop and that is your first bit this is the most complicated part of peyote once this foot these first rows are established you're fine picking up another ginger bead we are now going through that white bead which signifies the outline of the door it's very cute think I'd like to live in a gingerbread house you'd never go hungry also wouldn't survive in the rain um, yes another ginger bead going through the next white bead so we're going through every other bead um you've probably noticed this i don't need to spell it out to you another ginger bead but this time it's a bit different we've got to do the dosi -si dough -do at the end so we're going through both the red bead and the ginger bead oh don't panic it's okay we're threading that down we're pulling it down take off the bead stopper because it gets on your nerves i mean you don't have to it just gets on my nerves and this is what it should look like. And then we're picking up another ginger bead. And we are going through the red bead towards yourself. And then through that G 
ginger bead diagonally down from the red bead. I've just sig signaled with my hands how to do it, that won't help. And then we're going through the ginger bead directly above that, and then we're going down through that red bead again, and down through that bottom ginger bead that the other bit of thread's coming out of. It's easier to see than it is to say. I'm sorry, I just clicked my fingers right next to the microphone. That was not the best move. And then we are going through the bead that we've just attached away from myself. And now we're ready to start the next row, which is a nice, easy row. Joys of Odd Count Peyote. Every other row's nice, easy row. Woo! Picking up a white bead, we're now going to be going through that ginger bead. Yep nice and nice another white bead this is just a row of picking up white beads and going through ginger beads honestly this is quality vlogmas content i'm uh, i'm impressed also i realized i should not be doing this late at night my voice is going another white bead another ginger bead and then i realized all my white beads were in the wrong place and i am moving them across i'm gonna have a swig of very cold tea mmm Drinking snowball in it is the temperature of snow because it is freezing cold. You see, it's awkward trying to bead weave while straddling a tripod, and that's what I did. You're welcome. Um, another white bead going through that final ginger bead in the row. Told you this was an easy row. Nice and easy. Right, turn it around. Well, you don't have to. I just find it easy to peyote away from myself, but you may need to have a play around. See what you feel comfortable with. See what sticks. Then we're not picking up a white bead. Come on me, get a grip. Picking up a ginger bead, and then we're going to go through the white beads. Now we've established it, you can see that they're sticking up, so it's really easy to see where you need to go. Make sure that you don't go through two beads instead of one bead, it's something I do quite often. Um, another ginger bead going through the white bead, and I'm just going to keep repeating myself. Rinse and repeat if necessary, it is necessary. Just keep going. Ginger bead through white bead. But now we're going to do -si do at the end again. So we're going through the white bead and the ginger bead. I know. Yep, yep, it's very clearly demonstrated me. You can go a little bit faster. And then you're picking up another ginger bead and you're going through the white bead and the ginger bead of the row before, or two rows before, the ginger bead of two rows before. The angle vastly improves after this row gonna be honest and then we're gonna go through the ginger bead directly above that through the white bead through the ginger bead of of a previous row we're gonna make sure it's in focus there we go pulling it through and then we're going through that bead that we've just attached I told you the angle vastly improves, look at that. And then it's like this for the rest of the video, you're welcome. So now we are picking up a red bead and we're going through a ginger bead. I know I said the color was called toast. I can't say toast that many times. You, it would drive you mad, it drives me mad. Uh, go White bead through ginger beard, beard? Ginger beard, oh God. <laughs> oh. White bead through ginger bead. Ginger beer is where I was going, but ginger beard happened. Red bead through ginger beer. Oh God, this is just going to keep repeating. Maybe I should say toast. Um, that was the nice easy row. So now is the, it's also an easy road. Let's be honest, peyote is really easy. Ginger bead going through a red bead. Ginger bead going through a white bead. And then we got plot twist. White bead for the top of the door. And then we're going through another white bead. Mm -hmm. You weren't expecting that. Well, I mean, if you can read peyote patterns, you were 100% expecting that. Ginger bead, we're going to do -si do at the end. So we're going through the red bead and the ginger bead. We know how to do -si do by now. I don't need to explain it, but I'm going to anyway. Picking up a ginger bead, going through the red bead back towards ourselves, and the ginger bead diagonally below it, like so. And then going through the ginger bead, the red bead, and the ginger bead in like a square dance fashion. I've never done a square dance. I don't know what square dance is. I don't even know why I'm calling this a do -si do because I do actually know what a do -si do is, and this is not one. Going back through the ginger bead. And then we're picking up a white bead. The next two beads are ginger beads. 
just so you know. If you've never listened to a voiceover of me doing a bead weaving tutorial before, this might come as a bit of a surprise to you. Um, I go off topic quite a lot, then have to like rein myself back in. Told you the next two beads were ginger beads. That one wasn't perfect, so I got rid of it. This is also what I do. Every I look at every bead that I sew on to make sure that they're perfect. And so if you buy a stitch marker from me, you know you're not getting a dud, unless you buy a second because a bead broke. Cool, now this is a fully ginger line. I paused as I said that because I had to double check. I didn't need to double check, I already knew it was a fully ginger line. I've made so many of these gingerbread houses, I drew that pattern up on the screen without even referencing a gingerbread house. So now we're going to do -si do at the end again. <clears throat> I do apologize, I have a bit of a cold. Picking up a ginger bead, going down through the white bead and the ginger bead. You've mastered the dosey dough by this point. I know you have, I know that you're a very competent individual. I don't need to explain it to you every time. So now we're picking up a red bead. We're double checking what, what row we're on, which is what I was doing just then. You're making sure it's in focus on the camera. And you're picking up a ginger bead. Once again, the next two beads are going to be ginger beads, so this is one of two. This is two of two. And then to finish off, we have a red bead, and we're going through the ginger bead. Very nice. You've got to make sure that your tension is nice and tight. Obviously not too tight, you don't want to break anything, but, you know, you've got to keep it snug. So now we're picking up a ginger bead, and we're going through the red bead. And then we're picking up a ginger bead and we're going through a ginger bead. And then we're picking up a red bead and going through a ginger bead. Plot twist. This is for the little windowy thing or wreath or whatever. Then we're picking up another ginger bead. We're going to do -si dough at the end, finishing it off with a nice ginger bead on the edge. Making sure it's nice. If you can hear click clacking in the background, that's my fish Sophie. She is uh, organising her rocks that's what she decides to do at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday night. It's all right, I'm choosing to do this, so we're all winners. Look, it's actually starting to look like a gingerbread house. This is me demonstrating to you how it's starting to look like a gingerbread house. It's very exciting, me, I know it is. So now we're picking up a white bead. Oh, even the heating singing. What joy. You can't say, okay, this was my arm going dead. My arm going off screen was just then was me shaking my arm because my arm went dead and then trying to reposition it. And then that was me repositioning it again because it didn't work. So now we're picking up a red bead and going through the red bead and then another red bead and we're going through the ginger bead. I'm really sorry for going slightly off track. Picking up a white bead and going through the edge ginger bead. So now this is where something different happens, but don't panic. I know you've got this. So we're picking up two beads instead of one. We're picking up a red bead and a green bead. Yeah, the green bead gets in on the party. And then we are going through the white bead. So yes, we have picked up two beads. I'm not going mad. And then that creates a little eave thing sticking out the side, edge of the roof or whatever. And then we're picking up a ginger bead and going through the red bead and then we're picking up a red bead and going through the red bead and then we're picking up a ginger bead and going through the white bead and then oh yeah we're doing the do -si do at the end so we're going through the ginger bead as well so this time you also pick up two beads a red bead followed by a green bead and I hope you just didn't hear my tummy gurgle um, we're sewing back through that white bead back through the ginger bead below it we're pulling it through and making sure the edge bead is nice and straight and then we are going back down through the ginger bead white bead ginger bead as we usually do and we're sewing back through only the green bead not the red bead because otherwise the red bead wouldn't stick out but you can't see it you won't be able to see the thread if you pull it tightly it will be fine so now we're picking up a red bead and we're going through the ginger bead and I'm sorry that was just out of focus. 
This camera is very difficult to maintain the focus in one spot without horrific cramp, which is what I had in this moment. So now we're attaching a, green, a ginger bead, and then another ginger bead, and then another red bead going through the green bead. So now we need to be coming out of that red bead there. So what we're going to do is sew back towards ourselves through the ginger bead underneath the green bead we're coming out of. We're going to go through the red bead below that, diagonally below that in the next row. We're then going to go away from ourselves through the white bead above that. And then we're going to be going through the red bead that we just attached the one we needed to come out of. And well done, you just decreased. And that's how you decrease in peyote. That's how I decrease in peyote. I don't know if that's the actual way, but it works. Um, and then we're picking up a green bead, and then we're picking up a ginger bead. And then we're picking up another green bead. Oh, now Sophie's blooping. So now we need to come out of that green bead we've just attached. So we're going to go down through the white bead uh, underneath the red bead we're coming out of. Be gentle, this is the do -si do side. Be aware that it might be a bit snug, you might need to go down a needle size. Then we're going through the ginger bead. Never force your bead through a needle, that's when they break. Then we're going up through the ginger bead above that. And then back towards yourself through the green bead that we just attached. Yeah, never force your bead through beadwork. And yet I do all the time. So now we're attaching a two red beads. One you go through a ginger, one you go through a green. And then we're going to do our little wiggly decrease. So we're going, we need to go out of that red bead, that's what that pointing was. We're going to go down through the ginger bead, down through the red bead, which is like the edge of the windowy wreath thing, up through the ginger bead. Yup. And then back down through the red bead, back towards yourself. I don't know why I keep doing arm gestures, you can't see me. As in voice over me keeps doing arm gestures. And then we're picking up a green bead to finish off the nice little point of the roof. Oh, that's so cute. So now we need to create the loop coming out of that green bead. So sewing back through your beadwork, you can either do the technique that you've been doing for decreases or doesn't actually matter what way out of the bead you go. So I'm just, you know, follow, just follow the, the path of the beads come out of that green bead and then I'm picking up five of those little um, seed beads one two three four five um, you don't even have to do that step if you don't want to do that step then you've already finished this and that is fantastic but I like to create a little loop because some jump rings do fit through them but not all beads um, I sew through that loop twice to make sure it's nice and secure I'm just going to have another sip of tea So now we need to sew back through our beadwork. A similar way to when you decrease. Um, make sure that you know, you're following the line of the beads, you're going backwards and forwards through the beads. Um, you don't need to do it too, too much, but a few times. You don't need to tie any knots because you've woven it tightly enough where knots are not needed. Um, so yeah, I go back and forth a few times and then through a couple of beads in a straight line. And then, then we're threading the needle on the other side on the other thread that we kind of abandoned at the beginning and sewing back through um, be very careful when you're sewing back through please don't force your needle through your beads it's usually at this point that a bead breaks for me because I'm impatient and yeah Once you have finished sewing through your beads, be sure to snip off the end using scissors very close to your beadwork. If you pull the thread tight as you snip, you will get a very close cut. So then we are attaching a jump ring. Take your pliers, twist them away from each other. You can also use tweezers. You can use your thumbnail if it's strong enough. I didn't want to chip my nail varnish. Uh, and you want to twist the jump ring, not pull it apart. And then you're going to pop your um, little charm on you're gonna pop on the finding and you're gonna twist it back together that's how you make sure it stays nice and round if you pull it apart it might stretch it somewhat and then this is just me making sure the edges are nice and close together and nice and clean and everything and yeah well done you finished your very own little gingerbread house
So I hope that you liked the tutorial and that you found it helpful and useful and all of all of that fun stuff. I tried particularly difficult to uh, particularly difficult. No, that's not the word. I tried particularly hard. Is that the word? I don't know. Um, to make sure that everything was in focus and that you could see what I was doing clearly and whatnot. I've listened to the critiques through the years and so tried to make this a one a better tutorial than all the rest. I haven't even fast forwarded anything, so you're welcome. Don't forget to share your little gingerbread houses with me by using hashtag the corner of craft or tag me on Instagram. I want to see, I want to see what they look like. That would mean a lot to me. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, let's just get them to everyone's favorite part of Vlogmas. I'll be back in a second. And now it's time for everyone's favorite part of Vlogmas. Don't, I, you know, I wasn't going to leave it out, even if it's not a traditional Vlogmas. What's in Hannah's Burn and Blend Advent Calendar today? I just knocked myself in the face. Beautiful. I'm glad I bothered to spend so much time on my makeup. So today is the 17th. Oh, I'm out of focus. You can come back now. Hello. 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 Good. And we've got another tea bag. Very exciting. Today's tea is Eaten Mess. Smashed strawberries, sweet crumbly meringue, and cream. Well, I think I'm gonna put the kettle on and make myself this, and then film the intro to this. So it's a fruit tea. It's not um, actually got any tea leaves in it. Apple pieces, rose hip, hibiscus, elderberries, freeze dry strawberries, licorice strawberry pieces, and natural flavoring. So I think I'm going to put the kettle on and get this on. Yeah. So I made myself the cup of tea. Of course. I've never tried this one before. I'm quite excited. It smells heavenly. Also, how cute is this mug? He's in a little knitted jumper. Oh, I'm steaming up. Mmm, hot, hot tea. Oh, that's quite delightful. It actually tastes quite creamy and quite strawberry, as one would expect from Eaton Mess, which is a British dessert. Eaton with an E-T-O-N, as in Eaton College, as opposed to Eaton as in E-A-T-E-N. But yes, really nice tea. And it's naturally caffeine-free because it's a fruit tea, which is fantastic, and that's what we like. But yes, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. This is not a promise that I'm going to be doing loads more of these. Um, but you asked for it, so I thought it would only be nice to deliver on it. And I didn't actually mind filming it, it was quite enjoyable. Editing it, bit of a faff, but worth it. You're all worth it, do not worry. So, if you enjoyed the video and you like knitting content, um, and me, feel free to subscribe and um, I'll be back tomorrow with another Vlogmas. Please thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it, thumbs down if you didn't, it doesn't matter, it's all engagement, I don't care. Um, let me know your favourite thing about Christmas. My favourite thing about Christmas is going to be getting away from the neighbours who are having building work done on their house and it's really noisy right now. If you'd like to follow me on social media, please feel free. Links can all be found in the description box below. And with all that being said, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in Vlogmas tomorrow. Bye.